Welcome everyone. Um, we're Cannabis 10X and we are talking franchising here. Our favorite CBD company, CBD Emporium. So you know Cannabis 10X, likely, or some of you do from, from um, our little Shark Tank venture. Welcome everybody to Cannabis 10X. We have 12 vertically integrated licenses. We've raised over two and a half million in cash. We're expecting a hundred million dollar pre-money value. We got to have some great events featuring moguls like uh, um, Bruce Linton, the CEO and former founder of, of Canopy Growth Corporation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jason Trope here with my partner, Holly Ford, giving a lot of insight from a high level uh, that most don't get. Built a better mousetrap here today. I like to invest in things that I think I can increase the probability of success by participating on a weekly basis. And then we had uh, Cheech Marin, Cheech and Chong. We are honored that you joined us today. And how are you doing on this beautiful Saturday? Well, it's great. I love to do the show because it knocks off 50 hours of court mandated community service. So. <laughs> I'm really excited to have a lot of people that have jumped on board with Cannabis 10X. And um, again, excited to have you here. Um, but, but Cannabis 10X isn't just about capital raises and brokering and all of the rest. It's, it's, it's our prime core focus is franchising. And um, we have an amazing development team with Harold Kestenbaum, who had franchised 40 brands, including Five Guys, Sabaros. 40 years. 40 2, years. 2,000 brands. 2,000 brands. Oh, yeah, correction mm -hmm. on that. Kit Vinson, who uh, is just brilliant um, gentleman in all walks, but but specifically in operations. And he he did the operations for Panda Express, Miracle Year, Hagen dazs um, and Lisa Bow, international award-winning branding strategist. She's a P&G executive, um, worked with Gillette, um, Olay, and all sorts of, of brands that help us with the development. We've got a 10X franchise sales team with the best of the best um, in franchising to help um, to help our clients find exactly what they're looking for. Um, and right now we kind of own the game. Most of the, the franchises are with us and we chose one CBD company, one, and it's CBD Emporium. And we've said, we, we made exclusive with them because we think they're the best out there. And um, I, I think right now, what I'm going to do is pass the torch to Jason. He's going to talk about why you want to be in this industry right now, what the opportunity is, and, and how to begin your growth strategy. And then from there, we'll go back and do some strong brand facts um, about this high-end brand. Um, and then we'll do some interviewing. Jason and I will ask um, John some questions about his brand. And then we'll talk about the process of how to buy this franchise, how to get um, an empire of your own. Um, Jay, you want to introduce us about sure. cannabis? Yeah. So uh, we're with, you know what, we're, we're on the cannabis side, full marijuana, as well as a CBD uh, side. And we did scour the earth for a very good uh, founder and came across CBD Emporium. And uh, we've seen a lot of franchise concepts, um, thousands, actually. And we've seen them, you know, launch and, and do it um, haphazardly. And we've seen them launch and do it in a very uh, strategic way manner and the proof you know it proves itself out over a few years and we were meticulous and uh came across cbd important we believe they are definitely standing on the strongest foundation and uh another thing you know that we look for in emerging markets is the growth of an industry you have a growth of a brand that's separate from the growth of the actual industry and if you look at retail you're lucky to see a one percent growth and especially since covid you're not seeing any growth you're seeing uh shrinkage so there's a lot of qualified people in retail who would make very good franchisees. And the growth of this market has about doubled in the past four years. And over the next two years, projected to double again. Um, I think it's about uh, around the $1.1 billion range now. And in 2018, it was $500 million. 
uh, should be about 1.9 billion by the end of uh, 2022. So that's, um, you know, when you get into the market, uh, there's, there's a very high bar for compliance, but unlike the cannabis side or the full marijuana THC side, you, all states are open uh, and you can get into major markets. Uh, you know, they carry CBD in major uh, retail outlets. So uh, the compliance, however high for the brand, is uh, not high to, you know, get, you don't have to be licensed to sell it. So uh, CBD has, I mean, CBD Emporium is carrying the best brands and continues to source you know, the, the best uh, brands to carry on their shelves, uh, other franchise models, you may see, uh, you know, sell only what they produce. And, they, and CBD Emporium will always carry the next best products. And they have a very good model of educating their, uh, their customer base. They have a, a closing rate, I believe about 90% of the customers who walk in the door become customers. And a repeat customer base from there uh, is phenomenal. Yeah, well, we're going to get into some of those brand facts yeah, here sure. in a few minutes. But thanks for the vision on yeah, cannabis sure. and CBD. So that's is um, again, you know what Jason said, and he's been in this industry for a long time. It's uh, um, it's about an opportunity right now, and the and the doors aren't going to stay open for a lot longer. And that's not a sales push. That's just the way it is. So, so um, next up, I guess we'd like to, um, we'll talk a little bit about high, high um, vision for CBD Emporium. Um, what we're most happy about in there is exactly what Jason said. They are, we've got 29 locations, company owned. They're just starting their franchising. You have an opportunity that's unprecedented. Um, they have three, I think, very unique things about them. One is that they are an international push. They have a vision um, to not just be domestically powerful, but but internationally. And we have the brokers and the means to create that brand, which would reinforce your franchise, reinforce your position by being part of McDonald's versus part of um the 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 bread place <laughs> never heard of it that's why um, and then the second thing is exactly what Jason said ninety percent um, close rate of walk through traffic thirty five percent loyalty and the reason that is is because they customize your experience you walk in just two employees they're highly trained by the franchisor you're not doing all that work and and they are literally given a spa type experience. They work through their, their needs, their requirements and create customized formulas and, and an array of products uh, to serve their customers. And then the third is exactly what Jason said again, is there, they have 60, I believe, and we'll let John jump in on that, unique brands that they've highly researched and test to make sure they have the top quality product out there. And you want to introduce John and tell a sure. little bit about his background? <laughs> yeah, John has a very strong background. Uh, if you want to jump in, John, um, he has a, a, a long background in business in uh, investment banking and in uh, um, you know growth market uh, companies. And uh, if you could, John, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Tell him a little bit about your brand and about your background. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the nice words you said about me and CBD Emporium and uh, that we're working really hard to grow a, a very special company. And um, I, I'm, I'm happy to talk a little bit about my background, but I always like to start off every meeting that I do, whether it's with uh, you know potential franchisees, uh, investment banking, or you know just vendors or, or just customers. I always like to state what our mission is because <clears throat> everything that, uh, that I'm going to talk about after this is really quarter what our mission is. Uh, and uh, our mission was created literally the first day we opened our, our first two stores, which was October 4th, 2018. <clears throat> it's to uh, inform, educate, and guide uh, our customers to better health and wellness through CBD. When we created the stores, uh, it, was, it, it really had my mom in mind. My mom is in her mid-70s. Uh, she suffers from all the aches and pains that people from the mid-70s uh, suffer from. Uh, and uh, she was very doubtful that anything could help her. Um, and when I introduced her to CBD, I uh, had a little bit of a THC background uh, as an investor. Uh, she was very nervous about taking something like that. She was afraid she was going to get high, which, by the way, to this day, still 68% of Americans believe if they take CBD, they're going to get high. So she was in a, a big group of people. Uh, she was skeptical that it would work. Uh, so she started using it, almost resistant to starting to use it, but she started using it. 
And next thing you know, her aches and pains are starting to go away. Her blood pressure is starting to drop. And her general mood started to, to you know, start, and of course, with more mobility and feeling better, everybody's mood's going to go up. But, uh, but, you know, her mood started changing. And I said, you know, <clears throat> there's no place for someone like my mom to go and buy CBD. She's never going to go into a dispensary. She's never going to go into a smoke shop. She would never buy product because she doesn't know what she's doing from a grocery store or convenience store. And those are the places that you know, people were looked at, looked at for buying CBD back in 2018. And it was out of that that we created CBD Emporium. It's a family-friendly, happy place. It's, it's clean. Uh, you wouldn't be embarrassed bringing your seven-year-old daughter in there or your 70-year-old grandmother in there. Um, it's a beautiful place to go in and learn about CBD. A great place to, to be educated and informed and guided to the right product, a, a real solution for problems. And cannabinoid medicine is a great solution for a lot of people's problems. And uh, we're very happy that we have the ability to help thousands of people every month uh, reach their goal in health and wellness, just feel better. <clears throat> so with that being said, um, it's a great opportunity for us to extend our reach through franchisees, to, to bring them into our family, have them be the benefit of all the systems and processes that, we, that we've created and, and we employ in our own stores. And I'll go into that a little bit <clears throat> to, to help people feel better. And, and, and God forbid, you know, it is America, we're capitalists make a little money in the process. Um, so uh, thanks to the good folks at Cannabis 10X, we're able to reach out to a, a much broader range of people because they're very good at selling franchises and educating people on, on being business owners. Uh, and we're able to, to take our model of helping people and putting it into those hands and hopefully spread across America even faster than doing it on our own. So um, I'll give you a little, little information about myself because that was the original question. Um, I, I've been in retail most of my adult life. Uh, I uh, owned, I, I was in investment banking in uh, uh, the um, uh, late 90s uh, and uh, early 2000s. I was part of the internet boom. Uh, before that, I was one of those internet guys, have a pretty active background in mergers and acquisitions. I have a legal education background. No, I'm not a lawyer, so you, you'll, you can still like me. <laughs> and um, um, so I had a pretty broad, broad background in investments and, and making investments in emerging industries. Uh, and I had the good fortune to kind of semi-retire in 2004, although it really didn't happen until 2006. Uh, but I had the good fortune to, to, uh, to retire early in life. And I decided, you know, take my passion of scuba diving and, and, uh, and turn that into something that I would do uh, into my uh, golden years. Um, owned a lot of dive shops, turned a lot of successful, di uh, or I should say a lot of dive shops that I bought into successful dive shops. Um, in fact, I met my, my, my wife uh, about 10 years ago in, in one of those dive shops. Actually, it was on a dive boat. Um, and we had a great time. We, learned a, you know, we had a lot of retail experience. We had a lot of people who were loving our stores. We were informing and educating and guiding scuba divers to, uh, to the underwater world at that time, although that wasn't <laughs> our mission. But, but that's what we were doing. Uh, but but uh, you know, we had a great time. Uh, my wife and I decided in 2014 that we would get out of the scuba diving industry and, and kind of, you know, just kind of enjoy life a little bit more um, awesome. and doing some other things. And then a friend of mine dragged me into the THC side of the business, asked me to help him raise some money. I knew nothing about medical marijuana. I knew nothing about marijuana. And, uh, and I really, you know, was kind of intrigued by it more than anything else. So I learned about the medical benefits of marijuana, did a lot of investment banking through 2015, 16, and 17 but was burned out from the THC industry because it, there's, so much, there's so much regulation in that business. The valuations were so high. Uh, it was a real tough place to, to really turn a profit as an investor, as a business person. Not that you can't do it. It's just very difficult. So I was very attracted to the CBD side of it. There's thousands of brands out there, but there was very few retail environments. And that's when we started CBD Emporium to give people a great retail environment to come in, that kind that I explained before, looks more like a perfume shop or a jewelry shop than it does a, a smoke shop or dispensary, uh, have happy, shiny people, as we like to say, behind the counter, true consultants, people who go through a ton of training and introduce them to, uh, uh, in, into CBD and this great plant medicine. <clears throat> so we kind of started Hi, on can that. Can we ask but... you a few questions? Can we sure, ask go ahead. Yes, absolutely. All right. Yeah, great, great, great. 
So you know the background, the story, and the team. It's it's built on real people and 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 great business success, obviously, with John and his team. And now you know kind of the brand, the UPS unique selling pro you, you the USP UPS, the unique selling proposition of this brand. Um, and um, John, would you be comfortable talking to us a little bit about how you source the products and why the way you do it will make that franchise successful? Um, sure. Well, we have um, we have two versions uh, or two channels that we go down to source products. The first channel is our own internal product management team. Um, that, uh, that that where we actually work with uh, uh, um, naturopaths and doctors and and formulate product um, and and uh, come up with our own private label brand. We do all the sourcing of the raw goods. We do all the sourcing of the materials, the packaging. We design all the packaging. Uh, and then we've decided that the, in, in light of the, uh, the FDA um, changes that are coming in the near future, we would not manufacture in-house. We would actually outsource our manufacturing to an FDA certified, a certified organic GMP facility um, and, uh, and have them, aside, we call it the assembly team, uh, assemble the, the products that we've designed and, and, and work with uh, folks to, 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 uh, to perfect. Uh, and 30% of our sales are CBD Emporium logo products. The other 70% of uh, CBD Emporium sales uh, come from other branded products. And, and we, we work with over 70 different brands. And if I started listing off the brands, they're brands that you would have heavily recognize as the best of breed in the industry. Uh, and we get amazing leverage off those relationships and brand equity. Uh, but what's really cool is, is about a year and a half ago, we put together a department, our vendor relations team, and they actually do nothing but uh, do due diligence on uh, these brands. So before you can even put one tincture on the shelf of any CBD Emporium, it goes through about an eight-week process of due diligence. And they actually go in and they have a full questionnaire and they go and receive all this information on where, how, the, how the raw goods are sourced, how it's assembled, where it's assembled what's included in the formulations, why they came up with that formulation. I mean, it's an 80 question checklist that we go through. And believe me, it's not, you know, choose A, B, C, or D. Uh, it's a very extensive due diligence process. It goes in front of a committee where, of, of product uh, evaluation committee, where people actually uh, review everything, uh, everything that, uh, that, that's been presented to um, you know, the vendor relations department. And at that point, um, we accept it as an approved product and we start working for the best possible business relationship. We call that the church and state. So it has to pass through church first in order to go onto the shelves and, and become part of our business. As you can hear, I'm in an airport. We just opened a bunch of stores in Oklahoma. So I apologize for all the background noise. Um, we love it. Yeah. Keep working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time with us. We're so yeah. grateful. No, it's okay. Anyways, so... We do an extensive due diligence. Then we do extensive uh, negotiation because not only do we want our franchisees to have the best price, but obviously we want to have our corporate stores have the best price. Uh, we want, you know, we want to be able to make money in the specialty retail industry. And we know we need to have the highest possible margins between the volume pricing and, and you know, the fact that we know the, the, the negotiation practice after doing it so many times where people's hot points are, where people's sticking points are. We're able to get the best deal for our company as well as our franchisees' companies. Uh, furthermore, just kind of give you an idea of the type of demand to be in that channel uh, with the other 70 brands. We have over 350 applications. People who want to, or I should say, brands who want to put product on our shelves. In fact, it's near impossible to go through the entire list of brands that want to be on our shelves. Uh, in, in any quantifiable amount of time. So, but that, that allows us, you know, to make sure that we're doing the best deals because we have the type of volume that we have and because we have the type of quality perspective we have. All right. Can you walk us through um, how to start, you know, how would a franchisee go about starting a retail outlet, scaling to multiple locations? Sure. Um, well, you know, one of my favorite parts of, uh, of uh, running CBD Emporium is actually going out and, and choosing the right location. And um, one of our advisors was the CFO and um, uh, founder of Sprouts. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Sprouts Grocery. And we followed a lot of what uh, of the advice he gave us, even though we were doing some of the things, he had some things we weren't doing. So we looked for neighborhoods, um, and we call them bedroom communities, kind of on the outskirts of a city, suburbia, 
um, where you know the uh, household home value is 25% above the average home in the area. The income level in the, in the household is at the top 25% of the area. Um, we, we look for a 45 plus median age and we look for um, uh, at least 35% or more of the population has some college or bachelor's degree or higher. Uh, an educated consumer, uh, typically that, that, that's the same type of folks who would go for like organic vegetables. And what we found is people with a higher level of education do more research and understand the cannabinoid products that we, say we have and will pay a little higher price for it. So it sounds like a really hard demographic to find that location. But once you find the location, you almost lock in the fact that, you know, 200 to 220 people every month are going to come into your store just because you put a sign out front. We also look for one store equal, uh, I should say 100,000 uh, people in a population equals one store. So if you go into a metro area with 1.5 million people, you actually have the ability to put about 15 stores in there. So we keep that ratio pretty tight, the one, uh, uh, one store for 100,000 population. And that seems to be the right number as well. Um, we also like to cluster our stores together. So we try to keep uh, three or so in one area and that usually provides the best uh, distribution for people to come in and get supports. Um, but once you, once you find a location and, and you have a franchise agreement, uh, it's a pretty easy process. In fact, the record uh, for opening a store is actually four days. Uh, store number three, which is in Paradise Valley, just outside of Scottsdale, uh, we've got the, we got the keys on December 17th, and, um, and we, opened, we did our first transaction on December 21st. Incredible. With a second-generation store, you just have to, you know, you have to put the paint on the walls, you have to put the floor down. They have to move the cases in, put the sign above the door, put the window wraps on, and it's a pretty easy process to open that store. Um, a, a good, uh, as we like to say, a good handyman uh, will help you get that store open very quickly. Good. Um, well, next question for you: What about um, what about your SOPs? What's your um, tell us a little bit about um, how you have made it easy for our franchisees that are coming on uh, online for this brand or considering this brand um, to, to have their, their processes and their systems just streamlined. In other words, business in a box for operations. Well, I, get, I think that's one of our advantages as a C, there's a couple other CB franchise uh, groups out there and, and you know, they do a pretty good job helping people just like we do. But I think one of the advantages we have is they're very good at selling CBD franchises and we're very good at running CBD stores and selling CBD. But our core focus is actually operating CBD stores. That's our, uh, all, all the stores we have right now. Um, and, and we're opening literally three stores every week uh, is, is all around uh, running these folks and, and running them well, because we don't, we're losing money and nobody likes to lose money. So We've developed over the last two and a half years a, a core set of uh, um, SOPs, and uh, it's actually been, um, I guess, perfected by our chief operating officer, uh, Stacy Schofield, who comes out of the grocery world. She was with Safeway and Albertsons for years. Um, we actually had an advisor, uh, his name's John Ford. He ran at both Apple and Microsoft retail chains uh, and developed all their SOPs, so he went through it extensively as well. And a number of other people. There's been so many people that have input and an opinion and, uh, and and helped out with the development of the SOPs. It's unfair just to give two people um, uh, that. But we, we went to people who knew retail and put these together. And again, you know, we don't want to complicate the, the business either. But there are certainly some operational SOPs that people have to follow. How to open the store, how to close the store, how to clean the store, how to manage the store. And of course, for our franchisees, we have uh, a lot of other um, information in there as well about business licensing and insurance and all that good stuff. So you really do get a business in a box uh, type of situation. That's great. So on the other side, then that's for the franchisees to get their operations, the back end, the back office going. What about the front end marketing to get consumers in the door and grand openings, and things of that nature? Yeah, well, that, that, that is the real secret to success. If you really want to look at it, you can have the greatest product in the world sitting on the shelves, but if you don't have people coming in and grabbing it, it's, a, it's just a pretty store at that point. Um, and, there, and, 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 and we look at everything from a foot traffic perspective. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier, we have an incredibly uh, high close rate. You know, people in, in most of our stores, and not including our mall stores, uh, we have a 95, 98% close rate. The mall stores are a little lower close rate, but they have much higher traffic volume. Um, and, um, and if you just put a sign out front and did nothing else, 
uh, in a community with 100,000 people, that's going to be good for anywhere from 180 to 200 people walking through the door. So if you did nothing else but just put the sign out front, uh, you know, you're going to you're going to mosey your way pretty close to break even. However, nobody got in this business to break even. So uh, we want to have a little bit of marketing and advertising. We actually have a chief revenue officer. His name is uh, David Zussman. And his sole job is to create programs for all our stores, both our franchisee and corporate owned stores, and working with our 70 plus branded vendors to do nothing but drive traffic through the door. And, and sometimes it's as simple as, as putting a postcard in the mail or a flyer on somebody's door. Sometimes it's uh, incorporating a lot of our technical tools uh, that, uh, that, that uh, find people through their cell phones and uh, and, 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 uh, and Facebook pages and allow them to be digitally marketed to. Uh, we, we, we do do traditional every once in a while, radio advertisement, we've even done TV advertisement, but sometimes that good old fashioned postcard is the best way to get people through the door. And we have some pretty good ratios and, and measurement keys that we, you know, just through our own experience of, of pushing people through the door. And, uh, we have all the tools ready to go for not only our, our, our store managers, but our franchisees. So they can turn that on. In fact, we have a launch plan A budget for that is about $10,000 that we do for our own stores that more or less guarantees success within the first 60 days of bringing people through the door and exposing the entire community to the new CBD store in town. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, adding to that, and I think everyone here that's listening today um, and future uh, recordings of this, there, there's clearly a passion to help the franchisee become successful as you know in franchising when a franchisee is successful obviously they they make more money so when you look at the models as you're going through it typically a franchisee is 35 percent more successful than a uh, manager by the umbrella parent company and um those, those numbers are reflected predominantly in the support and the training that the franchisor gives you. So, um, John, would you care to talk a little bit about um, or a little more about the support that you're going to give the franchisee from the day that they come in and sign that agreement through the lease, through the opening, through the build out? Um, through the through the success of that franchise, you know whether it's in person, conferences, whatever. Well, um, well, I could spend all day talking about how we're supporting the franchisees, but I'll wrap it up from this perspective, and I think it's a good perspective too. We treat our our franchisees the same way we treat our store managers. That our store managers go through a training program that helps them understand how to build their business, uh, uh, not just run the business, but build their business. And it's very important we train our store managers this way because that's what ensures that we don't lose money. So we're going to put our franchisees through the same style of program. It's going to be a little different, obviously, but the same style of program as we put through our store managers, showing how they can build their business, how they can take care of their business, how they can prosper their business. In fact, one of the things I tell people is, Mr. Store, our store managers, I should say, is pretend you own this store and I'm your investment banker. I'm writing you a check to open this store. But at the end of the day, I'm going to grade you like an investment banker as well through profit and loss. And we want our, we want our stores to be profitable and we want our store managers to be successful. So we, we give them all the tools to, to do that. Again, one of the great advantages is we're out there running our stores too. We want them. That's our core business. It's not just a side business or, or something like that. We're opening stores every single week. So we have to have these things profitable. And we're going to bring that same attitude, that same perspective to the franchisee world and support them. And the reality is, we, as you said, uh, franchisees should outpace corporate on stores because they have one thing that a store manager will never have. And, and, and that's the risk model. You know, at the end of the week, the store manager is still going to go home and get paid. At the end of the week, if that rent has to be paid, the store manager is not going to write that check. The owner of the store is. So when you're managing your store as a franchisee owner, you're going to have, you're going to have a higher level of, uh, uh, of attitude when it comes to making sure that those revenue goals and those profit and loss goals get met because you have risk unlike a store manager. So we fully expect that little ownership mentality twist to produce better results from our franchisees. And right now we have a lot of successful store managers. So I, I highly anticipate we're going to have a lot of uh, successful franchisee owners. That's, that's a great answer. And, and again, it's, it's uh 
that's a fact, 35% higher revenue of franchisees versus owners. And I think and from what you're hearing with John, um, you may be, that may, number may even be higher. Jason? Sure. So um, on the support, you had uh, a training session there uh, as well. Um, part of that starts with uh, a discovery day, which, uh, you know, if you normally you go through an application, if you submit an application and it's accepted, you're invited for a discovery day where you'll come out, you'll meet John and his team and tour uh, a store or tour maybe a few stores and uh, get a little look behind the scenes and see what it would be like uh, to be the owner of a CBD Emporium uh, retail outlet. Um, do you want to tell them a little about um, what they can expect when they come to visit? Um, well, they're probably going to meet a lot of people just like them, people who are, are, are interested in business and, and interested in being successful and interested in helping people and interested in, in uh, obviously, the CBD industry. So, I mean, that, that's the first and foremost. But the other thing you'll do is meet the people behind the processes. You know, one of the big advantages of going with a franchise chain, like whether it be us or somebody else, is we can, we, we've already spent a lot of money developing processes, a tra you know, a marketing programs, vendor programs, quality control programs, lab testing programs. Uh, you know, obviously the training program is a huge one. We spent over $500,000 uh, um, building a training program. There's no way a single or even a small chain of stores could, could invest that much money into a, a program. Uh, our training program is updated literally on a, week, a weekly basis. Um, uh, obviously, we have a lot of industry influence. Obviously, we have a, a lot of brand recognition. Uh, so that allows us to do a lot of powerful things and, and, and deliver those powerful opportunities down to, uh, to our franchise group. Uh, it's a nice funnel process. So when you come in, you'll actually meet the people We'll talk passionately about the programs that they've spent the last two and a half years developing um, and, and, and actually get to ask them questions. Well, you know, tell me about how, how launch marketing works. You know, when I put the sign on the door, uh, you know, how am I going to drive people to the door? And, you know, our chief revenue officer will sit down with you and say, this is what a launch plan looks like. And when you have operational questions and, and you want to understand better how to order inventory or order signage or business cards, you know, Stacy Schofield, our chief operating officer is going to tell you exactly how she does it with, with all her corporate owned stores. So you'll have an understanding from firsthand from the people who are doing this every single day of the programs and processes. Also, um, one of the things we'll do is we'll talk a lot about the competitive aspects of things, the branding aspects of things. Uh, we'll visit some stores. Uh, we have all these different types of stores. We, we categorize them in boutique stores, standard stores, plus stores. And you can start to figure out what type of store you want to build because not everything has to be exactly the same size uh, and because and, they do have different components to it. Our, our number one store is actually our smallest store. It's in the, uh, the Arrowhead Mall in, 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 in Glendale, Arizona. It's 533 square feet and it kicks out more dollars than any other store out there. So maybe you're gonna look for something that's a little smaller, but in a much higher traffic place. Uh, one of my favorite stores to walk into is up in Wickenburg, a very rural town. Uh, it's uh, mostly homeowners and retirees, 7,500 residences. So it's a very small market, but it just absolutely kills it because they have such a targeted demographic in that area. So you'll start to see not only hear the stories and, and hear the numbers, but you'll actually be able to start to put it in perspective with our store visit. And then most importantly, and I think this is the most important thing that comes out of the entire uh, discovery day, is you walk away with every one of your questions answered. So that all that's left is you got to sit down and say, you know, is this the right thing for me? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't answer that question, but I can give you all the answer. I can give you all the, the tools necessary to make that decision. And I'll tell you what, it's a very exciting industry, very exciting opportunity. And you get to meet some incredible people. Awesome. Thanks so much, John. So, so exactly what um, John was talking about, we'd like to just kind of give you really briefly the steps in the process. Um, if you um, would like more information about this franchise or you want to buy one. So the steps are really simply, um, you know, obviously, however you came into here, the information that you've gathered, whether you've talked to 10X, whether you've talked to a 10X broker, whether you've talked to one of our, our partner brokers, however, you know, you got this introduction, that, was, that would be the first step. This webinar is so informative. Obviously, we require everyone to, to attend this webinar prior to some of the private conversations, just so that they're able to get the overview. Obviously, we have a 
um, an enormous amount of candidates coming forward for this. And John is selective over and, and rightfully so over the best uh, candidates for the brand. Um, after this webinar, um, you'll meet with Cannabis 10X or, or one of the brokers, one of our 10X brokers and um, for franchise sales. And you'll, you'll talk to them about your questions, um, what you're looking for, um, things that you maybe didn't understand at this webinar or you just information you didn't get yet. Um, a note about financials. It's very difficult um, to, to use financials other than what's in the FDD. Um, because again, we can't give a franchise performance representation. Um, so so we're, we're extremely careful about that, um, but that will be in your FTD. Um, then of course, after you receive the FTD, you have an optional in-person visit or you can do a virtual store visit with John. Um, because of COVID, we still are allowing that option. Um, and once John meets you, he's going to know, you know, after he has some of the specific questions, whether you make a good um, candidate franchisee. And I don't think you'd be on this call unless you knew what you were doing. So um, that, that no condescension um, there at all. But then um, John will make his decision and he'll, he'll tell us, you know, hey, I'm going to award this franchise to John and Lisa or, or whomever. And, um, and then at that point they can sign the franchise agreement and then they go out for training and, um, and, and build out of the location, uh, finding the location with John, uh, the grand opening, getting profitable and then iterate, <laughs> repeat. <laughs> Go ahead. That's right. So, um, you know, for the next stacks, steps, that's it. You'd go ahead and uh, reach out to us or through your broker uh, and we'll get you started uh, on an application uh, or answer any questions that you might have to uh, get you uh, well informed to make your decision. Any last thoughts from John? First of all, thanks to everyone for, for listening and putting up with the uh, Oklahoma City Airport background noise mm -hmm. and uh, I hope uh, I hope you all join me in this amazing industry. We've still got a lot of room to grow. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really fun ride. Love to love to see who we go on it with. We'll be on the ride with you, and we're looking forward to a long road ahead. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm uh, Jason Tro from Cannabis 10X. My partner here, Holly Ford, get in touch with us to uh, take any next steps towards cannabis franchising. Bye bye, John. Thank you. That's some heavy shit, man.